Hello there. Hi. Me. Uh, so Tara and I had the opportunity to go hands-on and watch the other person play Metro Last Light, the follow-up to Metro, which is a Russian game. Uh, the original one, fascinating, flawed. Um, this one, equally so. If you don't know what it is, it takes place in kind of an alternate reality where World War II ends with kind of like nuclear explosions. I said nuclear again, didn't yeah. I? I? I'm a child of the Reagan era. I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> it's, um, it is probably, I mean, it's a beautiful game. It really is. But it is, but the, the beauty is of something so dark and depressing. Yeah, it's not really the same as the first one in that sense. This one is it, has it, a completely it, different storyline. It's not based writer, on the, yes. Same writer, but same it's writer, unique yeah. for the video game. If you, if you don't know the background, uh, the idea is there's this apocalypse something? and everyone in Moscow can only live underground in the, the really serpentine uh, subway system that really does exist in Moscow. Each station becomes its own city and traversal from station to station in the tunnels is itself quite dangerous because there's mutants and creatures and warring tribes yes. of various factions. Um, it, it's pretty much a study in beautiful hopelessness, I would say. It is, and I was particularly surprised by how beautiful the metro stations are in this one. The city hubs that you go through, just the amount of detail. Yeah. They have one where all of the tunnels are flooded, so it's sort of like, it looks like the rivers of Venice or yeah, something. Yeah, they call it Venice. Yes, they call it Venice. <laughs> An ugly the Venice. There's yes. there's no opera house. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and there's a burlesque show you can visit, and the guy who was demoing the game you know, was telling us, if you just sit there and watch the burlesque show, like, like, new acts will start to come on and like all kinds of stuff goes down that most people normally miss just by going on to the next section. And, and, and that level of detail, uh, a, a lot of this team is from another very famous Russian game, Stalker, which mm -hmm. uh, was almost shocking in how officious it was. Like you had to watch your heart rate in that game and you're seeing that detail in other aspects of this. It, it, it inherits uh, things from the first Metro, such as when you do go outside, the air is so polluted you have to keep gas masks on and you have to keep uh, an eye on how much oxygen you have left, which just adds a wonderful oh, yeah. level of tension to the affairs. And this really is some, something you can see in a lot of just even the more basic gameplay elements that, you know, shooting, shooting monsters, shooting people crawling around in the dark. Yeah, and even, you know, like I was saying, I can't believe how gorgeous the inside areas are. The outside areas are even more beautiful. Uh, the sky, you know, there's actually color now. They didn't really yeah. have a whole lot of that it in is the gray. first game. It is gray and dour and action, yeah. which makes sense. Um, <laughs> One part, uh, you know, we haven't even talked about the combat so far because honestly, there wasn't a whole lot of it in our playthrough. Um, but the enemy AI, which I know is a big problem in the first game because people actually thought it wasn't forgiving enough, it seemed entirely too forgiving this one. Because um, there are a lot of stealth areas of the game where you can stealth around mm -hmm. or you can go a more run and gun approach. You stealthed a lot in your playthrough and I noticed there were a couple instances where you walked right by somebody in plain view and they yeah. did not notice it's, you. It seems to have, and they, they, we were told that they've tried to work on how you bring the attention of the guards if they do mm -hmm. find you, uh, that they don't go into a cool down period. As you see in a lot of stealth yeah. games, like, I don't know, maybe I just heard something. That didn't seem to happen, but it was kind of a zero to 60 approach. Stealth, stealth, stealth then suddenly everybody's on top of you, but it did seem pretty easy to just kind of move. You can see how the level design is set up. The combat was there, but yeah, as, as you mentioned, both the human and more so in the mutants, the artificial intelligence didn't seem to be terribly dynamic. With, with yeah. the creatures themselves, I, I hate to use the word, but yes, there was a sense of, if not scripting, uh, that they were all kind of following the same path and you didn't get yes. that sense of um, danger or something that was kind of organically coming out of the combat scenario. Yeah, I completely agree. You, we saw a lot of that in the in the train sequences where you have to fight them off as they're Yeah, they kind of would just yeah. jump up on your cart in the exact yeah. same position you could kind of anticipate. Yeah, exactly and it's a lot better actually in the outside areas because they're coming from all different directions, so it's a little bit more varied. The game, similar to the first one, uh, is it's a very directed game. It's single player, it has a story to tell, you're gonna stay with the story. I didn't see any side quests or stuff like that. I don't I don't recall any from the first game as well, but it's, it's definitely not an open world. It's just they have no. a story to tell and you're gonna get caught up in yeah, it. Yeah, the combat I feel is secondary to, to the narrative, which really sort of takes the spotlight in the game. Most of the sessions we played were connected to one another. I think I think what you played was a little bit further on in a swamp area. Yeah, we started off in the area that I first saw during an E3 demo last year, and then we sort of veered off. We saw maybe three or four different sections of the we game. We saw two, two of the stations, which are kind of the hubs where a lot of the narrative takes place. Uh, there was a, a, a bit on a, on a 
I, I guess you call them a car, but they run on the tracks inside of Train the subway. Cars, yeah. Uh, and you did pop off there. You had the option to hop off quite a bit in the course of it and collect more goodies, uh, of which there are very few. People are going to do that. Uh, fighting both mutants and that. And then there was, you know, you're, you're dealing with rival factions. I don't want to give away the, the big plot point that happened in the course of this. But uh, suddenly you have friends and then you don't have friends. And there was a lot of human combat as well. And that's where a lot of the stealth came yeah. in. You don't stealth the, the mutant. But the, the one thing I can say is they still add, there's still quite a bit of drama, especially in the mutant combat. Uh, you'll probably see more enemies that are really going to confront you. And it does become quite scary. Uh, the, the thing I do like that they've changed about the game is the, the guns in the first one, they're all kind of cobbled together. Mm -hmm. uh, and they really did feel like cobbled together weapons in the first one to the point where it became a little bit challenging yeah. to really engage with the combat. Here, you still have that homemade approach, but they worked a little bit more efficient, efficiently and in line with what you expect out of a shooter, because it is a challenging game, and I, I think just having something that felt so unstable was an unnecessary challenge, yeah. at least on the normal difficulty setting. Yeah, and then they've also cleaned up the whole HUD. Everything looks really good. I think the, the issue I see is that hopefully the AI is going to get a little bit yeah. more advanced. Having said that, I am very excited to be playing it because there's something about the atmosphere of this game. Probably the closest corollary you can have in tone is also out of the eastern part of Europe, uh, which is the Witcher series, which is this very interesting take. You know, it just seems very sort of culturally relevant, and you don't get that in Western European or North American games. Just the sense that it's not like there's good and bad. There's that form of horrible, and there's that form of horrible, and it, it doesn't fall completely into nihilism, but it does just seem very consistent with that region and the history it's had to endure over the past um, couple hundred of years. And it just feels very fresh and, and revealing. Yeah, and the story looks really awesome. I yeah. mean, there was a twist even in our playthrough, and they're usually pretty reticent to let people experience that kind of yeah. stuff before the game. But um, it does seem like, you know, there's a lot of flashback sections and things that really sort of drive home the and it desperation takes of it all. it's time to, to tell the story. Yes. It is not combat all the way through. You'll go into a city, there will be interactivity. They really are going for that kind of more holistic mm -hmm. type approach with the game is really telling a deep, rich story. Well, all right, that was our take on the hands-on of Metro Last Light. It's coming out in May, or at least currently it's coming out in May. Uh, who knows, things change that's going on all year long. Uh, and we'll be telling you more as we learn it. <laughs>